Okay, everybody, good morning. Um, it's 9 o'clock, so we'll get started uh, immediately. Uh, my name is Eleanor Sutton, and I'm the Managing Director for CANOE, and I just want to welcome you all to uh, our first webinar of 2018. So we're fortunate today to have uh, with us uh, two presenters to talk about uh, noise exposure and cardiovascular disease onset. Um, Audrey is an Associate Professor at the Department of Environmental and Occupational Health, at the School of uh, Public Health and a researcher at the Public Health Research Institute at the University of Montreal. And Larissa Yancotti is a PhD candidate who works with Audrey um, in public health epidemiology um, at the same institute. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. So Audrey, uh, if you want to just star star your phone, um, we can uh, yep. move along. Yeah, thank you very much, Elena. So uh, we'll be talking about environmental and transportation noise and exposure to cardiovascular disease onset. And uh, next slide. Um, so here's an overview of the presentation. I will uh, first um, present what is environmental noise, transportation noise, and I'll talk about cardiovascular disease before I present my assessment of the literature on transportation noise and onset of cardiovascular diseases and other effects. Uh, I will uh, discuss what I see as gaps on the effects of environmental and transportation noise on cardiovascular, uh, well, on cardiovascular effects. And um, at the end, Ines will uh, present some of uh, the work that we're doing uh, in Quebec to address uh, current gaps. Um, so, yep, yeah, next uh, slide. Okay, so when we refer to um, transportation noise, we refer to noise from transportation sources such as road noise, uh, train noise, aircraft noise. Now, this is different than what we refer to when we refer to environmental noise. Um, and there are a number of definitions of environmental noise, um, but usually we would consider uh, environmental noise, noise from all sources outdoors so uh, and as well as some of some indoor sources so that would include uh, for example uh, noise from your neighbors uh, uh, noise uh, from uh, um, kids and parks or uh, um, noise from bars and uh, noise also related uh, uh, to uh, activities in hospitals and daycares and so on um, now um, for uh, my presentation, for our presentation, we will refer to transportation noise because this is what's mostly been uh, modeled and used in health studies. And uh, we will also present uh, some of our work on outdoor noise, uh, which we refer to as total environmental noise. Next. Okay, when we refer to cardiovascular diseases, we refer to both ischemic heart diseases, also co called coronary heart diseases, and cerebrovascular diseases. So cerebrovascular diseases include stroke uh, mainly, and ischemic heart diseases mainly include myocardial infarctions. Um, next. Okay, uh, risk factors for cardiovascular diseases are both mod modifiable and non-modifiable, so genetic, for example, for non-modifiable risk factors. As for modifiable risk factors, besides environmental factors such as air and noise pollution, there are other uh, uh, obvious modifiable factors such as smoking and physical inactivity. Next. Okay, and when we refer to uh, noise, environmental or transportation noise, we do not refer to pure, sa pure sound. Uh, in the environment, we're exposed to um, various sound waves that are various uh, frequencies that compose a complex sound. So we are rarely exposed to pure sound, such as what is presented in this slide, so you only have one uh, wave of a specific uh, frequency, which is usually not the case. What we hear is composed of multiple type of sound waves of various uh, frequencies and intensity. Next. And uh, the human ear does not hear well the low frequencies, and so this is why we use the um, 
uh, a frequent uh, the uh, correction a so we use decibel a we we reduce the intensity of the uh, noise of the waves that are of specific low frequencies because we do not hear well those frequencies so for example if uh, in a complex noise there are some sound waves of 100 cycles per second there would be a reduction of the decibel by about 30 uh, decibel to obtain this decibel A. So this is what usually we use in health studies. So we usually, usually use decibel A. Next. Uh, and uh, in health studies, a number of uh, indicators of exposure to environmental noise have been used. Like often, we would use equivalent noise levels, noise that would uh, be equivalent for a specific periods. So, for example, 24 hours. So the L. A, uh, EQ 24 hours, or uh, we would also often use L night. Now, in Europe, LDEN is an indicator that has often been used. It's an indicator where there's a weight of 5 decibel for the uh, night, uh, the evening hours, and 10 decibel for the night hours that are added to the uh, sound levels because uh, we are more disturbed uh, by the noise during those hours. So the European have uh, often used LDEN as the indicator of exposure. And there are many, many other uh, indicators uh, that uh, can be used. LA max, the maximum sound level for an event or a period of time is another indicator that's, that's been used. Next. Um, okay, besides cardiovascular effects, noise induces other effects like uh, first noise annoys us. Uh, we get disturbed by uh, noise, uh, it uh, disturbs our sleep, and uh, um, annoyance sleep is likely um, involved in cardiovascular effects of noise, and I'll get back to that later. Um, now, noise has also been related to other diseases such as diabetes. There's a very recent cohort, uh, a, very, a very recent study that's been uh, actually published recently by some colleagues from CANU, um, David Yu and colleagues on that very, very recently. Um, there's also other effects, uh, namely uh, learning effects uh, for kids in, uh, that are exposed to noisy environments are also uh, uh, documented in the literature, and there are other effects also that have been documented. Next. So um, how does noise uh, influence our health? Uh, so directly uh, on, or indirectly, it will influence our uh, nervous system. So directly, noise influences our autonomous nervous system, and this disturbs our neuroendocrine system. Uh, indirectly, when we're annoyed by noise, when we're stressed by it, it um, influences the cerebral cortex and directly thus induces also neuroendocrine disturbances. Now, um, sleep, if noise disturbs our sleep, this is also another mechanism uh, through which uh, neuroendocrine disturbances uh, can be noted. And those uh, neuroendocrine changes have been associated with increased blood pressure, uh, blood glucose, and other um, uh, parameters uh, have been modified, and this is likely the cause of onset of some diseases such as myocardial infraction, MI, stroke, uh, hypertension, and diabetes that have been related to exposure to noise. Next. Okay, um, this is from a survey uh, uh, that we performed on the island of Montreal. Uh, what you see here is the annoyance of people um, by sources of noise. And so you can see that there's about 21% uh, of the people uh, on the island of Montreal that are uh, annoyed, or about 9% that are highly annoyed to road traffic noise, and there's about 14% uh, who are uh, annoyed by airplane noise. Now, there are uh, f fewer people exposed to airplane uh, aircraft noise than to road traffic noise. However, the prevalence of people annoyed by um, airplane noise is quite high, so 14%. Um, 
um, and you can see that uh, um, there is a lot of annoyance by noise from apartments nearby uh, on the island of Montreal. Next. So now uh, that I've uh, provided a few, um, uh, that I've uh, given an introduction on uh, environmental transportation, noise, and cardiovascular diseases, I'll talk about, um, I will present my assessment of the literature on noise uh, and onset of cardiovascular diseases and other effects. Next. So first, uh, road noise has been related to hypertension in many studies. Uh, most studies were cross-sectional. Uh, so uh, this, uh, on this slide, you have um, the uh, uh, estimates of association uh, from a, um, a systematic uh, review by Kempen and Babish. And so uh, most of the studies that were assessed were cross-sectional. Most of them were uh, from Europe, and um, so there's a pooled uh, OR that was estimated of a 3% increase per 5 decibel A uh, LDN. Um, now, recent assessments uh, w uh, using the escape cohorts also showed small effects of uh, transportation noise, uh, however, only on self-reported hypertension and not on measured uh, hypertension. Um, so there remains some, um, I mean, there's still a need for additional uh, evidence to, uh, between, in my view, road noise and hypertension, considering that most uh, studies were cross-sectional. Um, next. Now, um, aircraft noise, not only road traffic noise, but aircraft noise has also been related to prevalent hypertension. So uh, again, most studies uh, were not cohort studies. Uh, so this is a um, an meta-analysis from Wang and colleagues. There has been, who have reported a, an increased risk for those living, uh, an increased uh, risk of uh, prevalent hypertension for those living in proximity to airports and exposed to aircraft noise. Now, um, there's a few additional studies that's been published since this publication. They've also shown similar uh, effects of aircraft noise on hypertension. Next. Um, Regarding ischemic diseases, uh, this is uh, a, from a systematic review performed by Vino and colleagues recently who have uh, pulled all studies on aircraft and or road noise and ischemic heart diseases. Um, so they report a small um, uh, increase of uh, ischemic uh, diseases with uh, uh, in, uh, um, with an increase of then 10 decibel A, so 6% increase per 10 decibel A, again, LDEN. Most of the studies on uh, this slide are case control studies. Uh, however, there's been a few recent cohort studies on uh, this issue, and um, some have shown positive effects, others have not. So there's still controversies, again, regarding effects of aircraft and road noise on ischemic heart diseases. Next. Um, road traffic noise uh, has been related to other effects than hypertension and ischemic diseases. So here you have a study showing associations between uh, road traffic noise and heart failure. Um, so those um, um, estimates are not adjusted for uh, road traffic uh, pollutants such as nitrogen dioxide and O2. Uh, however, there remain the associations, although they decrease, there remain an association after adjustment for NO2 uh, in this uh, paper. Next. And uh, so besides uh, heart failure, other effects that have been assessed include strokes. So here is a, a study uh, by Sorensen and colleagues who've shown associations between road traffic no noise and stroke. Uh, they have also um, uh, reanalyzed uh, uh, or pursued their assessment. Uh, uh, Sorensen and colleagues have uh, uh, published other papers on noise and uh, stroke. 
uh, more recent papers. Nonetheless, others have also assessed uh, such association, such an association, such as Dimako Pulu and colleagues recently. It's a cohort study. It's the hyena, uh, follow-up of the hyena cohort study. Um, and uh, although it was on aircraft noise, they have not uh, reported convincing associations between uh, aircraft noise and um, stroke. Uh, and uh, there's been other studies as well, such as Flaud and colleagues in 2013. And again, there remain controversies in the literature regarding uh, environmental noise, transportation noise, and uh, stroke, uh, onset of stroke. Next. Okay, other effects have also been uh, related to uh, transportation noise, blood pressure, for example, and very recently in children, and the uh, various studies were also reviewed uh, in, recently in a um, uh, review uh, which showed that there was large heterogeneity uh, between studies. Uh, there's also been studies uh, that I found interesting uh, which have pe performed repeated measurements uh, in adults exposed uh, daily to uh, noise. Um, so there are other type of studies and there are other effects than the, um, um, myocardial infarction, stroke, hypertension, or heart failure that have been assessed. Arter arterial stiffness is also another outcome that has recently been related to uh, nighttime uh, noise events. Um, next. So, um, I remain with the impression that um, there's been lots of studies performed between transportation noise and cardiovascular uh, diseases, um, that the aircraft and road traffic noise have been associated with hypertension, but that most of those studies were cross-sectional and they also mostly assessed the effects of uh, road traffic noise. Uh, in my view, it remains unclear if exposure to transportation noise noise or environmental noise is related to onset of uh, ischemic diseases and stroke. There remain a few controversies in the literature. Um, there's been recent studies showing that uh, other uh, cardiovascular effects or other effects uh, may also relate to exposure to transportation or environmental noise. Next. Um, However, there remain some gaps in my view. Uh, we uh, currently uh, don't know if uh, associations that are mainly from Europe uh, between transportation noise uh, and hypertension and myocardial infarction are generalizable to North American population. And actually, one thing that we really don't know is if uh, we are exposed in, in North America to noise levels that are similar to those from our uh, Europe European colleagues. Um, so we have uh, currently very little information on indoor and outdoor noise exposure levels between countries. Uh, and uh, indoor noise, uh, the exposure, the main, our main exposure, because we spend most of our time indoors, um, may uh, greatly differ uh, from uh, indoor noise in Europe because our buildings are constructed. Con constructed differently. And so currently, in my view, it remains really unclear if associations that were mainly based on transportation propagation models that were mainly performed in, re in Europe do apply and do uh, are generalizable to uh, North American populations. Um, furthermore, uh, we uh, most studies uh, use propagation models to estimate uh, exposure. Um, studies have rarely used measurements or estimates that are based on measurements, and so we currently don't know really, in my view, if noise levels outdoors that we measure uh, are related to cardiovascular effects. Uh, next. Um, so when I mentioned that uh, it's unclear to me if associations from Europe are generalizable to North America, um, I kind of um, explained this a bit here on this slide. Where What you see here on the left is the relation between uh, noise levels, LDEN, um, uh, uh, estimated with transportation noise from a propagation model and uh, annoyance, 
And on the right, you have the same exposure, uh, LDEN, but from a land use regression model that is based on measurements and annoyance again. And what you see is that um, when we're using uh, the land use regression model, which represents total noise, all the noise in the uh, and outdoor uh, environment, then you see that the relation is not as steep as the relation when you use a propagation model. The propagation model actually does not include all noise sources out from outdoors. It only includes its model using uh, transportation sources. And thus, the ambient noise levels that would be measured, that would correspond, for example, to 60 uh, decibel that are from a propagation model would probably be higher than that. So maybe 60 decibel from a propagation model corresponds to 70 decibel from a land use regression model. And so this is why, in my view, the, um, the relation is not as steep when we use a land use regression model that is based on measurement. And this is why I question, considering that the relations may not be linear, this is why I question whether the uh, relations that are based on propagation models do uh, relate to uh, the um, relations that could be observed here in uh, North America overall because we also do not uh, model indoor noise levels and exposure. Next. So we have uh, very uh, limited information, actually, on how noise levels compare between uh, regions of the world. And actually, this is kind of stunning that as of today, we are totally incapable of uh, uh, saying if uh, noise levels in Montreal is lower than uh, noise levels uh, in Paris, for example. So this is one of the only uh, studies that I've seen comparing or an attempt to compare exposure to noise uh, in various regions, in this case uh, of the states. Here, what you see is the number of people exposed to high noise levels in proximity to airports. And you can see that, uh, well, there are airports such as New York, for example, where noise levels are very high. Um, if we would uh, uh, be interested uh, to, for example, Montreal uh, would be just like the airport in Montreal would be just a small dot. Here is uh, noise exposure um, from our land use regression model. and. Uh, one other thing that's currently uh, um, uh, an issue is that we don't really know is the effect of transportation noise is similar to the effect of aircraft noise. So here from our land use regression model, you see um, close to the airport, about the center of the island of Montreal, you have like a red patch. This is the airport. So you see that noise levels are high there, but you can also see that noise levels are very similar and high along major roads and highways on the island. So are similar noise levels uh, related to different effects if they are from different sources? This is something that we currently don't know. Next slide. So uh, on this next slide, what I show is that some evidence suggesting that indeed noise from air airplanes, even if at a similar intensity, may induce different effect than noise from road traffic. So what you have here uh, are uh, results from a survey that was performed on about 4,000 people on the island of Montreal. To the left, it's uh, annoyance uh, from uh, aircraft noise, and to the right, it's annoyance from road traffic noise. Um, on the top left, you have in the brown uh, those uh, exposed to the highest uh, aircraft noise levels. Uh, those in brown are those living within what we call the nest curve, the noise exposure forecast curve, which is in a uh, dotted line. This is the zone in proximity to the airport where noise levels are the highest. So those highly exposed are within, are living within this uh, re area, and they're in brown. And then in orange are those um, farther away, and in yellow, those living one to two kilometers away from the uh, aircraft uh, noisy area. 
So you can see you have two curves at the bottom. You have one which is dark and one which is uh, gray. The dark represents the highly annoyance and the gray uh, annoyance. So you have about 40% of the people living within the noisy uh, NEF curve that are reported to be highly annoyed by aircraft noise. Now, on the right, you have those living very close to major roads and highways on the island of Montreal. So those are living within 50 meters of the major road or a highway. And you can see at the bottom that there's about 22, 3% of those living very, very close to major roads that are highly annoyed to road noise. So these results suggest that maybe at similar noise levels and intensity, such as I, what I presented on the map earlier. So at similar noise intensity, aircraft noise may induce greater annoyance and health effects than road traffic noise. Next. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, we currently do not know if noise effects vary by transportation sources. Maybe they do, and maybe it depends on the intermittency of the sound, like the frequency of the peaks that you may observe in proximity to aircraft. Uh, we still also uh, don't really know if some populations are more vulnerable to cardiovascular effects of transportation or environmental noise, and uh, there there still remain questions regarding the confounding effect of uh, tra uh, road traffic pollution, such as NO2. Now, uh, next slide. Inés will now uh, present some of the work that we're doing in Quebec to address some of the, those gaps. Uh, she will talk about effects of environmental noise, so total noise from all sources using our land use regression model and uh, myocardial infarction onset. Uh, these are assessments that are done with population cohorts in Quebec. So uh, thanks, sorry for the uh, <laughs> noise uh, behind me. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. So the aim of our study is to investigate the association between long-term residential exposure to environ environmental noise and the onset of acute myocardial infarction in Montreal. Next, please. To do this, we use the Quebec Integrated Chronic Disease surveillance system to create an open cohort of adults 45 years old and over free of MI between 2000 and 2014. This surveillance system is derived from the linkage of data from four administrative health databases. We use validated diagnostic codes and definition to assess the outcome. Next, please. About the noise exposure, we use land use regression uh, models to estimate uh, total noise, as Audrey uh, said before. So she talked already about this slide. Next, please. I, 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 I want to mention that we also use the night noise level so I didn't uh, show this map, but we use it all also in our analysis. We also use the distances to transportation noise sources as exposure. As you can see, we have different kinds of transportation noise sources across the island, such as uh, road traffic, railway, airport zone. So you can see it on the, the map. We also have a train yard uh, on the right side of uh, airport zone. We we use cost regression models to estimate uh, to examine our uh, the association between noise and the uh, Now the result between 2000 and 2014, more than one million uh, adults on the island were followed for a total of nearly 7 million persons years. The mean age is 66 years, and 53% were female. About the material and the social deprivation indices of Pampalon, 
uh, we, we restricted our analysis to Montreal Island. So we don't have 20% uh, in each quintile. And so 19% of people are in the most materially depressed category, whereas uh, nearly 34% were in the most social deprived, deprived one. The mean of uh, uh, the nitrogen dioxide, which is the most uh, the main uh, main uh, pollutant uh, in uh, road traffic uh, is uh, around 15 ppb. During the follow-up, more than 47,000 people were diagnosed with MI, so 4% of uh, the incident. Next, please. This slide presents the distribution of noise level and distances to, to, to transportation transportation sources, and also the correlation with uh, NO2. We can see that the mean of both LAEQ 24 hours and L night was above 55 decibels, and the correlation with NO2 around 0.2. About the distances, uh, I have to mention that we use maximum distance like 10,000 meters uh, with net zone and 5,000 meters in order when calculating. Next, please. Uh, now the association result. We did not publish this paper yet, so please do not cite. Here I present the crude and partial adjusted hazard ratio for NO2 at the entry of the cohort with both LAEQ 24 hours and L night. And we can see that uh, for both of them, the risk is 20% per 10 decibel increase. And uh, no change in the risk after adjustment, adjustment for NO2. We don't found any association with distancing. Next, please. And when we fully adjusted I mean, for year NO2, uh, pompalon and deficit, uh, stratified by cells and have a, a age as time passes, we saw a large decrease of the risk, which is now 10%, uh, 10 decibel increase in L night. And we don't find any association uh, with distances again. Additionally, it seems that the risk is stronger with people under 65 years. So here, 17% uh, uh, of the risk, a uh, 10 uh, decibel increase in L9. Next, please. In conclusion, we found a positive, positive association between total environmental noise and MI. The risk was higher for people aged 45 and 65 years. Our results are comparable to those of others who use transportation noise instead of total noise. However, in those studies, as Audrey said, the relationship between noise and the MI was considered linear. And uh, in our study, it, it, it is not yet clear, uh, so we have to, to evaluate the linearity of the, our models, and also the, we will do other, uh, other analysis, uh, like uh, integration analysis. The associations are strongly influenced, influenced by social and material deprivation indices and weekly by NO2. Next, please. As future work, we will assess association between exposure to transportation noise from mathematical model, CADNA, uh, and onset of uh, MI. We will also assess the association between both environment, environmental and transportation noise and onset of stroke. We will also investigate uh, mediation and modification effects on, those as on this association by metabolic disease such as hypertension and diabetes. We will finally do indirect adjustment for, of association by smoking. We may have a decrease of the risk 
after this adjustment because people who were most uh, exposed exposed to noise are the most smokers. So we thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Audrey and Inez. That's very interesting and certainly a lot of uh, pulling together a lot of literature and, and interesting results that you're presenting as well. I'm going to take the prerogative and ask a question <laughs> either of you are <laughs> and, <laughs> happy to answer. Um, I, I'm not sure I, you probably did say it, but I'm, you mentioned that your results were um, – the results were very sensitive to socioeconomic um, deprivation indices. And I'm wondering, and then you just talked about smoking. So I'm wondering if you have thoughts on on why you see that association and what that might mean for um, helping to reduce noise exposure or, or policy. I'm not sure that I understand your question. I'm <laughs> sorry, um, oh, uh, Elena. So we... Uh, I mean, there may remain uh, residual confounding at, uh, currently in our results uh, when we'll uh, adjust indirectly for smoking. We are likely going to capture some of it, but still, you know, it's uh, we have very limited information on uh, from the individuals in our cohort. So, in terms of though the deprivation indices. Yeah. So when you said that people um that the depriva their where they were in the quantiles of deprivation made a big difference. What do you think is happening there? Well, I mean, this is a population cohort, right? So we have all the population of Quebec aged forty five years and older that's been followed by our cohort. So this represents the entire, actually, and we're only presenting results from Montreal, but this uh is the uh, deprivation of the current population. This is how people are deprived on the island. Um, now, it, it may be that those more exposed are also poorer, which is something that we've seen. And so, yes, it's quite difficult to totally disentangle the effect of uh, deprivation and the effect of noise. Do I <laughs> address oh, yeah. your question? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was thinking about that and, yeah, wondering how, how that was getting controlled for, definitely. Uh, very okay. interesting. So um, if there are other questions, feel free to use the chat function. Um, we don't have, I don't think we have too, too many people. If you want to ask a question verbally, you can unmute your own phone just by pressing star, star on your own phone, and then you should be able to speak to us directly. Um, as I mentioned, uh, if you don't want to ask a verbal question, by all means chat or you can email to us later. Um, I'm going to ask another question. <laughs> um, Audrey, <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't mean to, but yeah, pop in any time, anyone. Um, I'm also interested in what you think about some of the challenges with measuring exposure, um, looking at long-term health effects and uh, not having a lot of long-term, you know, noise measurements for those folks. I know that's a big challenge. Do you think there are are, are ways forward now with new technology, or will it remain a big challenge? It certainly remains a big challenge because, yes, as Inez has shown, we've used um, exposure at cohort entry, but we assumed that there was no variation over time of the noise exposure because we only have estimates for a, a recent period of time. Um, it's uh, actually surprisingly very challenging to have information on uh, historical trend in noise uh, levels. So we currently have very limited information on how noise has varied over time. Uh, was it higher, lower before in our cities? And uh, so there are uh, opportunities, uh, you know, technical opportunities for that, we can gather some information on past emissions of motors, and uh, we can also uh, gather measurements, uh, but it's going to be uh, time-consuming. 
Do you think that, you know, the world of people with cell phones and apps and things, that there might ever be a chance to have people, care, you know, using their phones to monitor noise and that would be indoor and outdoor? Are we close to that now or is it the noise monitor itself maybe that is a challenge? No, no, that that would be interesting uh, for sure for prospective cohorts and to uh, document further noise exposure. Uh, there's definitely lots of opportunity currently for that, but uh, going backwards remains the biggest challenge. Right, right, definitely. Okay, well, I'll um, uh, say thank you very much. Uh, one last call for questions uh, from the, our listeners. Uh, again, you can use the chat function or you can star star on your own handset and ask a question verbally. Um, while we're waiting for anyone to pop up, I'll just extend our thanks to both of you very much for um, putting together a very comprehensive um, uh, presentation. Um, we will have it recorded, uh, so that will be useful. I know I'm going to go back and look at a lot of those graphs and numbers more carefully. <laughs> There's a lot of great information there for sure. Um, with that, um, I don't see anyone. Oh, do we have someone going for a question? you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, Hello. yeah. hi. This is uh, Lucille Flamme from the Ministry of Health and Social Services in Quebec City. Hello, Audrey. Bonjour, Lucille. Um, I'm going to try to do it in English. Uh, listen, I, um, from what I gather, we still need a lot of assessment done for really um, make a liaison between uh, hypertension and all kind of uh, cardiovascular disease and, and environmental noise. But do you think at this point, uh, you know, we're working at, uh, at to see if we can make things change and like with policymakers and everything to uh, uh to address the problem and everything so uh regardless of the lack of knowledge that we still have to acquire uh, uh the the knowledge that we have to acquire do you still um uh, you think that we can go ahead and and work really seriously with the policymaker to uh uh to try I do. to the, the, to change yeah. things. I do, Lucy, I do. Uh, here I present uh, research gaps, but I, I mean, it's clear that we are annoyed by environmental noise, and this is just sufficient for actions to take place. There are many, many places where people are highly annoyed by their environment, and this is sufficient, in my view, to put in place uh, uh, mitigation measures. Because you know we we just uh, we need you scientists yeah. and, and researchers <laughs> to uh, yeah. bring the proof <laughs> to bring the proof so we can work with uh, the policymaker and make sure that it's really uh, you know we say we're back up by what we uh, it's sure that people complain a lot and and with reasons um, yeah. but uh, anyway thank you very much because I know we will have the occasion to work together in the future. And, uh, Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Lucy. <laughs> so if there's no other question, I thank you very much all for uh, your presence uh, today. Um, and I ha I'm happy to uh, respond to uh, other questions that you may have by email. Great. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll conclude our um, webinar now with a final thank you to Audrey and Inez. Um, and have a great day, everybody. Take Thanks. care.